Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Borderlands the pre-sequel. And in this video, I'm going to be going over how to get consistent legendaries to feed into the grinder. Nope, it isn't opening up stores trying to get the legendaries from the item of the day. Still not quite right. It isn't farming Iwajira and then looking through his loot to see if he dropped the thingy. No, after Iwajira's loot pool nerf, this is pretty much the only way to get consistent legendaries relatively easily to feed into the grinder to get the legendaries that you want out of the grinder. Um, it, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Iwajira's loot pool was nerfed recently for to make way for possible, and I'm putting my fingers up like air quotations right now, possible future events on Gearbox's behalf for the pre-sequel. So, instead of fixing the problem of respawnable bosses or legendaries that don't even have a loot source in-game, they were like, hey, let's get rid of the easiest way to get those legendaries that players can't get by nerfing the consistency at which Iwajira drops the thingy, the legendary sky of rocket launcher, which is ridiculous. And if you're gonna try to fix, a, if, if you're gonna make way for future future content, fix the problem at hand first. But before this gets into more of a rant than I want it to, um, I've come up with a alternative way to get consistent legendaries of your own. Um, Recently, with the most recent patch, they added uh, Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. You don't have to pay for ult Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. Um, that was a free uh, little add-on for everybody. Uh, the only thing that you pay for with the Holodome Onslaught, the most recent DLC, is the extra 10 levels and then the Holodome Onslaught itself. So, if you're not interested in hitting level 60, and you're not interested in doing a boring 5-wave, you know mission. I, I know I'm not. I'm probably not going to do it. I'll I'll hit level 60, but I don't care about the holodome. Um, then this is, this is you know, this is for you. This guide is for you. Um, what you have to do is boot up Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, and for those of you familiar with Borderlands 2, Ultimate Vault Hunter mode puts you right past King, or uh, not King Mong, that's a different enemy, puts you right past that Bully Mong at the beginning of the game, Knuckle uh, Dragger. Um, and right outside of Liarsburg. In the pre-sequel, however, you start off at the beginning of the game. So you do have to play through that sort of, you know, get to Jack, save Jack, get to the Moonshot console, blah 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 blah. Um, and at the end of the intro for the pre-sequel, there's an enemy called, um, Flame Knuckle. Flame Knuckle in True Vault Hunter mode had a really high chance to drop the legendary Tor rocket launcher, the Nukem. And it seems his drop rate has carried over into Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. Now, one of the key things about Ultimate Vault Hunter mode is that you can reset your progress at any time that you want. So, if you're you know, putting two and two together, uh, get up to Flame Knuckle, kill him, get his drop, reset your progress, do it all over again. Uh, I timed myself, it takes me about 10 minutes to get from uh, the the starting point to Flame Knuckle. Um, actually, it takes me about that long to get to him and kill him. I can do it all in about 10 minutes. Um, which is about how long it took me to get legendaries from uh, Iwo Jira prior to this. Some people are more lucky, I wasn't, you know, say la vie. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to have some footage running in the background of me getting a Nukem. Um, if you don't get a Nukem, do not save and quit. Turn off your console, hit Alt F4, whichever you're playing on PC or a console, and then you'll start up right at the beginning of where you came in. But you don't have to do all that progress getting Jack and then blah blah blah, because he's already over there. All you gotta do is run to him. It's a little bit of a trek, but I mean, you know, it's, it's not you know, terrible. Um, I killed Flame Knuckle about six or seven times, and he dropped it three or four times for me. So I'm thinking his drop rate is somewhere between 33% and 50%. So, if you keep at it, you'll get one. One thing I noticed about Flame Knuckle is in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, his health is a little beefed up, so I wouldn't recommend doing this until you're at cap, 
those of you without the DLC would be 50, those of you with the DLC, the cap would be 60. So I would recommend getting the 60 before trying to, you know, farm for these uh, legendaries, because, I mean, you're going to out-level them if you get under-leveled legendaries anyway. So, essentially what I'm trying to say is, if he drops it, awesome. Save and quit, reset your progress, do it all over again, it takes about 10 minutes. Uh, if he doesn't drop it, quit without saving. I cannot stress that point enough. Because if you save after he doesn't drop it, you have to reset your progress empty-handed. Anyway, I hope this guide's been helpful. I'm still not too sure how much of this game I'm going to be playing in the future, but now that Gearbox has added this capability, it will it does seem a little bit more appealing to me. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.